Hello everyone, welcome to the video. Here we are going to discuss about DSHA recruitment process as well as the previous year questions. So first of all, this DSHA is a product based company. Uh, this is one such MNC, Multinational Investment and Technology Development, which was actually founded in 1988. And uh, so they have actually a significant presence in the world's capital market. They invest in a wide range of companies like in both developed and developing economies. The basic job which is uh, job roles which is offered by Disha is software engineer role is also there and uh, quality assurance engineer is also there. So for quality assurance engineer the PLP is of around 29 to 29.5 and for software engineer the role uh, it is 2.3 starting from 2.36 to 10.11 LPA and uh, the eligibility criteria for uh, applying this particular role is uh, BTEC. So for software engineer, it should be CSE and IT. For quality assurance engineer, it can be CSE, IT, EC, EEE and DNA. And we should have a CGP of 7% and uh, no current areas should be there. So for a candidate to be eligible for DSHA campus recruitment process, here she should clear the academic and graduation criteria. So uh, make sure you go through the things before applying for the DSHA recruitment process. If it is recruiting in your campus, the eligibility criteria might differ. So students from IT, CSE, EC or MCA or MTech are eligible for DSHA campus recruitment process and uh, you should have a minimum of 65% throughout in your graduation or like 65% or above both in your 10th and 12th as well. And you should not have any backlogs and you should have a excellent communication and interpersonal skills. So talking about the recruitment process or the number of rounds in Disha campus recruitment. So we have actually four rounds. One is online test, second is technical interview one, then technical interview two and finally HR interview. So the written test uh, it might have both aptitude and uh, coding. Uh, there is a chance of conducting coding also like MCQs and coding also. So normally if we consider both aptitude and coding we have quantitative aptitude, verbal, logical reasoning, technical MCQs and coding and uh, approximately like uh, 20 MCQs from aptitude then 20 MCQs from technical and one coding question is expected. So around 41 approximate question is expected and the time duration is 60 minutes. And a negative marking is also there. So for each wrong answer, like a 0.25 is a negative mark, which was given in the last year. So quantitative aptitude in the sense, uh, general aptitude questions like time spread and distance, profit loss, percentage, time and work, ratio proportion, these set of questions you can expect. And in verbal ability, reading comprehension, sentence completion, synonyms, antonyms, and uh, logical reasoning, coding, decoding, puzzles based question, data arrangement, those type. And technical MCQs, uh, you can expect the questions on core subjects and on uh, either C, C++, operating and networking. And from coding, uh, basically you will be getting the questions from uh, data structures and algorithm. And that too, most probably you might get uh, questions from using dynamic programming, greedy algorithm, backtracking and etc. So this is all about the... Uh, recruitment process and if you want to apply for the off campus drive so you can apply through the company website so you can go to the Disha official website after that in the top of the page you can find the career option you can click on it and you can search for the new openings is it there or not if it is there you can apply for it Well, let us solve one question uh, which is a previously asked a question so it is a house robber problem now let us read the question and uh, get the logic then we can do the code you are a professional robber planning to rob houses along a street now each house has a certain amount of money and the only constraint stopped you from robbing each of them is adjacent houses of security system connected 
and it will automatically contact the police if two adjacent houses were broken into on the same night. Given a list of non-negative integers representing the amount of money of each house, we need to determine the maximum amount of money you can drop tonight without alerting the police. So it is very clear we have some n number of houses and each house will be given some values uh, and my task is I need to find the maximum amount of money which can be robbed tonight and the only constraint is no two adjacent houses were broken on the same night so I need to go with the alternate houses now the first line consists of the size and second line obviously array elements in output I should, cons uh, I should print the maximum amount which is stolen here you can see this 4 represents a number of elements in the array so 11, 12, 13 and 11 are the elements now I need to find the maximum amount right so I won't be able to go like 11 and 12 or 12 and 13 so either I should go to 11, 13 or I should go to 12 and 11 so if I add 11 and 13 I get 24 and if I add 12 and 11 I got 23 now if we compare which is the maximum value 24 is the maximum value so I can print the maximum sum. So this is what I need to do, right. So here actually, uh, this is actually a classic dynamic programming problem. And the goal of the problem is I need to find the maximum amount of amount you can draw from a row of houses, right. Given that you cannot draw badges and houses. So here the input consists of an array where a of a let me take a and a of a represents the amount of money in the ith house now the task is to determine the maximum amount you can get without robbing adjacent houses so i'll take a function where i'll be taking two parameters uh, first what i am going to do is i am going to include the base cases so what and all can be the base cases if what if, if there is no houses that is if the size of the array is zero so nothing is there right obviously my maximum amount is also going to be zero because there is no number of houses right and what if, if the number of houses one obviously I can return that particular value so while returning I will be returning my house value in the first index position because only one value is there so that value I will return now what if, if the value of n is equal to 2 so two values are there right so while returning I need to return the maximum amount my first house value and my second house value right this is what I need to do so for this what I'll do is I'll create an array uh, let me name dp because the question is based on dynamic programming of size n to store the maximum amount of each house now I'll initialize two elements let me take based on the base case right I'll initialize two elements so we use dynamic programming to fill the array for the remaining houses starting from the third house I will do so first two houses I can directly fill and uh, from two less than n I'll run the house so for each house I need to calculate the maximum amount by considering two options right so one is I will uh, rob the particular house the particular house and I will add it to the maximum value from the two houses ago so that because adjacent house should not be taken so in that array two houses ago I can take so do not drop the current house why because maximum amount from the previous house so I will, how I will be taking the maximum amount from the previous house dp of i minus 1 right so I will set this dp of i to the maximum of these two options right so I'll find the maximum among these two and that will be uh, will the value so after the looping is done finally this dp of n minus 1 right in this what I'll have I'll have the maximum amount which you can obtain without robbing the adjacent houses so you can return this particular value right so this is what I'll do right so I repeat the process after doing these things I will declare the array 
and I'll store the first element in the first value and I'll store the maximum of my first and second in the second value. Then from the third value, again I will find the maximum of my current and previous two houses like DPF i minus 2, i minus 1. Current only I will not tag because uh, it represents a, uh, it, if I include it, it represents a adjacent house. So this is how I'll do the uh, logic. Now, let me do the code here. So let me start from the main function. So inside the main function, I need to get the input from the user. So let me use the main function in the main. Inside this, I'll get the input value from the user. First one represents the number of houses. So I get the number of houses from the user. After that, I'll declare an array of name a and size n. Now I need to get the input value from the user. For getting the input value, I will run the loop. For i is equal to 0, i less than n, i plus plus. Here I will get the input value from the user. Now I can call a function. So for that, uh, uh, let me call the function maximum sum where I will pass my array elements as well as a size of the array. Here I can return 0. Now I need to define the function. So here the function is going to return a integer value. So in the max sum of two values, one is my uh, first array is nothing but my house value and second one is the size of the array. Now I will include the base condition. What if, if the number of houses is equal to zero? If the number of houses is equal to zero, I will return zero. What if, if the number of houses is equal to one? If the number of houses is equal to 1, I will return the first value that is h value of 0th index position. Right. Now, what if, if the number of houses is equal to 2? If the number of houses is equal to 2, I need to return the maximum value among my house value of 0, comma house value of 1. Because if there are two values, among the two values, the maximum value I will return. What if, if there are three values? So for this, I am just declaring a dynamic array. Let me name the array as dp and the size is going to be n. Here, what I will do is, I will store the first value as house value of 0. And I will store the second value that is dp of 1 as maximum among house value of 0 and house value of 1. Because here itself, I am keep on uh, what adding the maximum maximum value, right? So when I get a maximum value, I'll store in it. Now from the third value, I'll run the loop and I'll store in the same direction. Running the loop from i is equal to two, i less than n, and i plus plus. Now inside this, dp of i will be equal to the maximum value among my house value of i and the previous uh, like two houses back. For that I will take dp of i minus 2 and I need to check whether the just previous houses are uh, greater or not. For that I need to check dp of i minus 1. So among this what is the maximum value I will uh, find. So from 3 it will get stored right. So finally, in dp of n minus 1, I will be able to find the maximum value. So I will returning, I will return that particular value. Here it should be i minus 2 and i minus 1 here. Yeah. Now let me include the necessary header file. Hash include io stream using namespace std. So this is how I will do. So here if you see the input 11, 12, 13 and 11, right? So number of houses is 4. So directly I will be doing this process only. So first here 11 will get stored. And here 12 and 13. Among 12 and 13 what is the maximum? 13. So 13 will get stored. And uh, here I will find the maximum value. So from 2. So 0, 1, 2. So 1, 2 is uh, 13 only. Sorry, here the maximum will get stored and here uh, 13 plus 
11 because i minus 1 means what will happen the previous house i am taking so what is 13 minus uh, 13 and uh, 11 if i add i'll get 24 or the previous value so dp of i minus 1 the value of i is equal to 2 so i minus 1 means 1 so 0 1 2 3 so what is 2 0 1 2 which is 13 i minus 2 that is 2 minus 2 which is 0 so 13 and 11 I will add and I'll check it with dp of i minus 1 so i minus 1 means 12 so I need to check whether if I add 11 and 13 which one is greater so if this is greater I'll go with this if not only I will then add 12 and 11 right so here I'm checking the maximum value between 24 and 12 right so this is 24 again Again, I'll run the loop. So, I will be adding uh, i is equal to 3, right? So, what is h value of 3? 0, 1, 2, 3. That is 11. So, 11 plus 3 minus 2, that is 1. So, 11, 3 minus yeah so I'll add these two values and I'll check with the next value so 23 and 24 if I'm adding 24 is a greatest so anyhow at last I'll be having the value 24 as the last one and I'll be returning it now let me check the code here there is an error in 13th line yeah I have missed a closing bracket I have added it right now Again, there is an error in 23rd line. Okay, sorry. For C and A of I. Now, let me give the same input. 11, 12, 13 and 11. Yes, I got the output as 24. So, this is how I will find the uh, adjacent values like uh, by not taking the adjacent values how we will find the maximum amount that can be stored that's it